Okay, alright, this is the third time recording this video because my camera isn't working very well. So I hope you can see us. I hope it's still recording. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Amarine, and I'm here. Uh, yes, please, just a minute. We're here to talk about sex. <laughs> really fast. Okay, so, pretty much, here's the deal. You know what? Like, you might feel like, oh man, I want to have, like, straight sex, or this kind of sex, or normal sex. And you know what? Here's the thing. Yeah, there's no such thing as normal sex, is there? No. Because everyone has different kinds of sex, and the way society talks about sex, and the media talks about it, you might feel like, oh man, there's, like, one way to have sex. One way to have straight sex. One way to, like, you know, like two or three ways to have sex. Or four. Media lies. Media lies. People lie. There's, like, a million ways. Or, like, several hundred, at least. If you don't believe me, talk to people who have cool sex. Talk to queer people. Read the Kama Sutra. Like, really. Come on. Like, look at, look at interesting porn. I don't know. Like, there's a lot of ways to have sex. There are books on it. So many. And also, there are ways that aren't in books. So, just be creative. Have whatever sex you want to have so that you're comfortable and you feel safe. Right? Basic intro. Yeah. Definitely. This is my girlfriend Mallory, by the way. <laughs> you can see her beautiful face. She has one. Some people I know were concerned about her lack of face in previous videos and thought that <laughs> there was no way that I could ever have a girlfriend with a face. But I do. So look at that. Whoa. That happened. We've been together. <laughs> We've been together two and a half. Two point five years. We sparkly jazz hands. Mallory says it's more like century because, because she thinks we're mythical beings. <laughs> but not really. But so we're not, not my reasoning for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, um... So we've done a lot of kind of sex-type things. And, yeah, we have. Which is a good thing. Um, <laughs> but, pretty much, um, you know, if you wanna, if you're a trans guy and you have a girlfriend or a boyfriend or whatever, and you wanna have, you know, sex, penis-like sex, um... <laughs> So you can use a strap on on whatever and make sure you like just get a good harness and you can do that. You can use you know other things, make sure that they're safe things. Um, uh, make sure that you still use you know protective sort of stuff because that's good to prevent you from getting STDs or from you know using dirty things on people, which is never a good idea. Um, but yeah, you can do that or you can just you know do whatever you want. Pretty much, you should make sure of three things. You should make sure that you are um, one that you and your partner come up with names for what you want to call your body parts and what you want to call your partner's body parts, even if they're cisgendered. Mm -hmm. It's nice just to check in. Um, that way, you know, you don't get into people, you know, feeling certain ways or getting upset about certain things or, you know, using words that make you feel bad or dysphoric or that don't make you feel like you can enjoy having sex in your body and stuff, because that's not good, um, ever. And so, mm -hmm. she's been really good about that. Mm -hmm. And, um, also, <laughs> is that you like me? <laughs> yeah. We really have been together two and a half years. Mm. Oh. Um, and let's see, what was the other one? Uh, also, you should uh, make sure, especially if your partner is really dysphoric or you as a trans person are really dysphoric, um, or sometimes cisgender people have dysphoria about certain parts of their body for whatever reason, um, you should really make sure that you talk about um, what your cues for shutdown are. Maybe you should have a code word or something for if you start to shut down. Uh, it's not usually your partner's fault. It really isn't. Good, it's still recording. <laughs> it's not your partner's fault. Uh, I don't think it is because it's, it's almost never, unless they've done something that you told them not to do, um, it's not really their fault. Uh, and it's not your fault if you're a partner. It's just sometimes you just think of certain things, certain things pop into your head, or you feel a certain way all of a sudden, and you just can't help it. Um, and it's much better to have a word or a way of indicating a partner that really looks, and or a partner, hopefully, and a partner that really looks for you shutting down instead of just, you know, having to stop them and explain everything because that can make it worse. Um, you may also think about, if you're someone like me who has a lot of physical dysphoria, um, and some of that comes out during sexy times, <laughs> you may want to think about, um, you know, what comfort, you know, wearing clothes during certain times, or, you know, coming up with a number system or code or something of, like, when I say this, or when I do this, this means that I'm only comfortable going this far, or I only want to do these things, but that's all I'm interested in. And, you know, if you're in a relationship and anyone says that, you should be respectful of it. Um, and it's really, really helpful instead of sitting there and, and explaining every time exactly what and why you want to do it, if you have a system you agree upon ahead of time, that can seem kind of weird to talk about. Okay. Before, uh, hand, but it's really, it's really, like, it's really useful, so I would recommend it. Um, well, also, really fast, uh, different people's <laughs> sexualities, uh, and identities. Also, 
really, um, just because somebody identifies a certain way, it really doesn't mean you need to have a certain kind of sex. Uh, I was glad to see Max's girlfriend is on the channel uh, and talked about she, had to, she identifies as a lesbian, but obviously is with a guy. Um, and that's fine, as long as you're respectful of the person you're with, you can identify however you want. Tyler identifies as pansexual for a lot of reasons, um, but not just not because I'm trans. It's not really about that. It's I mean it doesn't make me less of a guy because she identif doesn't identify as exactly straight, right? No, no. So you know, I identify as queer, and that doesn't mean I'm into I don't know whatever. It doesn't make you less of a woman. So however you want to identify, it's cool. Yeah. Uh, Say. Oh, uh, I think uh, there's a really cool pamphlet that I and another guy wrote on this topic, and I will. In it's you should just read that. Really, um, it says what I'm saying much better, and it says other cool stuff too. So you should check it out. I'll put in a link down at the bottom. And uh, hope the camera work wasn't too shoddy with me trying to balance <laughs> here in my bed with my girlfriend. <laughs> and uh, cheers. Say bye, Mallory. Bye, Mallory.